Hello and welcome to Aging Matters, a program featuring people who talk about issues of interest to older adults and their families. I'm Cheryl Beversdorf, your host. Aging Matters TV show is pleased to present the third episode of a three-part series called Aging Research. This episode focuses on exploring the impact of design of home interiors on overall health and well-being of older adults. My guests today are Moira Gannon Denson, an Associate Professor of Interior Architecture and Design at Marymount University. She's also an award-winning, nationally acclaimed design professional. With her is Caitlin Doyle, a Marymount University Interior Architecture and Design graduate student. They will talk about their research, which is focused on creating optimal home interiors for older adult residents to promote wellness and longevity. During the program, Moira and Caitlin will present a variety of design materials that can be used to construct safe interior environments to support active, healthy aging. So welcome, Moira and Caitlin, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Well, Moira, I'm going to start with you. We have heard the phrase aging in place so often nowadays with our aging population and our older adults. So talk about the current trends in interior design for aging in place. Coming out of COVID, we're really becoming aware of how our interior of our home is impacting our health and well-being. So as we're aging, we're um, living, working in our homes. And so the adaptability and flexibility of spaces is becoming really important. So whether it's a space that is used for a class, a Zoom class one day, but maybe a caregiver is staying in that space could also adapt for an opportunity to quarantine. So we've really been asking a lot of questions about our home environment. Um, the importance of the occupant health, so how materials are, if, uh, performing in the space, how if you have any type of allergens or um, sensitivities to materials, that's really important, but also that's partnered with environmental health. So how are the materials uh, having low impact on our environment? Uh, we're also really looking at uh, technology, so smart technology, how can your home support you um, we have a great question of how are you willing to know more about are you willing to let your home know more about you um, the human-centered design so that's actually an interior design industry term but it really is about having empathy for the end user this is really important in design where you try to design with the occupant and the end user so the homeowner um, or anyone in the home, you don't necessarily design for them. So it's a collaboration. These are really important pieces in trends today. Okay, and I'm wondering that given that um, older adults, which is what we're talking about, uh, they may have certain disabilities or other kind of health conditions, are there certain specific elements that need to be considered when designing for safety in the home. I, I would imagine that's a really important factor that if they're gonna age in place, that they have to be safe. Right, that's a very important question. So um, lighting is really important. So if you think about daylighting, we often want to have more daylighting, but as we're aging, we need more light. But daylighting isn't necessarily great if it's not filtered in. It can. Pro, uh, cause glare on certain materials. So it has to be about how you layer light. So if you have daylighting, which is natural lighting, great for our health, it needs to be filtered at some, on some level. And then we also have different other levels of lighting with artificial lighting. We wanna look at, of course, the general light. So safety, making sure we have that layer covered in our homes. But we also want to have task lighting. And sometimes we think of like a goose neck lamp that we pull over to a task. But a really great one to think about is um, in the kitchen where you have um, a countertop 
and we're now putting under cabinet lighting on, so that you don't have shadows casting on whatever you're cutting on the cabinet. Um, and then the third layer of lighting, so we had um, general, we have task, is also accent lighting. So we want to accent key features in the home and that can support with memory, that can support with delight, so our well-being in our spaces. So another, this we talk so much about environmental risk and so I just wanted to also ask you, Moira, what are major areas for environmental risk factors in the home? What, what does that mean and how are they assessed for, for safety? What do we need to know? Yeah, it's a, it's a big term, especially when we talk about falls and falls prevention. So in the home environment, you always want to look at the entryway. First, when you're coming into the house, whether you're coming in maybe from a garage or whether you're coming in from the front door, we want to think about um, if it's a really bright light outside and you're coming into a dark space, that transition between um, from one space to another, it's hard to adapt. Um, you want to make sure that there's not a glare on materials in those spaces. So we really look at all the spaces in the home and we sort of do a little checklist, go through and say, well, um, what are the challenges in these spaces for aging? Um, when you get into the kitchen spaces, it's a really you know, important one for us, we like to cook. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you maybe are trying to pull something that's out of reach, so an upper cabinet could be really a challenge. And when you want to bring like a plate down uh, from an upper cabinet and try to place it onto uh, the countertop, if you don't have a contrast in the color, and so more importantly, the value of the color between the countertop and the floor, the chances of dropping that particular plate are greater. Okay, so that's an environmental risk, it's a challenge. Uh, bathrooms, the same concept where the toilet seat, you don't want to have that, for example, to be a white toilet seat and white tile on the flooring. We, in the bathroom, we're often uh, maybe taking medication, there's a night light on, you know, there's things that minimize our sight. And so you want to have a value change of the material. So that's another risk in, in the bathroom. Bedrooms, we want to make sure that we can have a clear path from the door to our bed. Um, so I think a lot of times we think of the stairs as the most in, you know, challenging space for an environmental risk, but a lot of times people actually are aware when they're on a stair to hold on to something. It's a lot of other spaces that we don't do that. Okay, well, and I want to get a couple more questions yet about, uh, and ask Caitlin this, about sensory changes that might impact um, independence and well-being. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so there's three main, or three ones that are pretty prominent with the aging adult right now, and it's vision, hearing, and mobility. And vision is the one that kind of impacts independence the most. As vision starts to go, whether that's from cataracts or medical condition or just aging, um, it, comes, it becomes very important to really highlight that contrast, similarly to what Moira said, whether that's from the floor to the countertop or floor to the step. Because if the individual in their home is not comfortable, they're less likely to leave. And secondly is the one hearing, and this can impact sleep, because if we don't have, um, if we can't hear very well, we may not be able to sleep through the night, and then that impacts your well-being overall, limiting you to not want to go out and socialize. And then lastly was mobility, and this is just making sure that furniture around the house is stable enough to where you know if you so happen need to grab onto something you can it won't fall over you don't have that fear of falling over um, those are the three that are impacting the and, and what research is kind of showing is that older adults aren't hesitant to use technology they're just afraid that it's not easy to use and that it's not pretty so what we're trying to focus on is making it super simple to use and also making it aesthetically pleasing because then that technology brings all the generations in the house together as a simple way to connect and kind of uses that smart home technology that we really want to move towards and gather everybody together with. Okay, so we're going to have an opportunity to see a little bit more about how we do that. So you're about to see a presentation about design materials that can be used to construct interior home environments to promote health 
and well-being of the whole family, but particularly the older adults. So use of these materials helps ensure safety and supports healthy aging for the older adult residents. So let's watch. Today we're demonstrating the materials for optimal aging that can help promote health and well-being in the home environment. So we want to take a look at materials from many surfaces within the home environment. So we look from the floors, the walls, the ceilings, uh, the millwork, the cabinetry. These are things that can impact um, your well-being within the space. So for this first image that we have here, we are looking at an accessory dwelling unit and we're focusing on the uh, vision change uh, that can occur, so the sensory change where your vision, your sight becomes limited, and how important it is that materials have a value contrast. So within this image, we can see here that we have a flooring, a countertop, and then the cabinetry all have a different value. So the flooring material uh, with the countertop can really create a great transition, a visual difference if you are potentially pulling from maybe an upper cabinet, a plate um, from the upper cabinet down, and you're going to try to place it on your countertop, the chances of missing are gonna be less um, if, for example, this was a white flooring and a white countertop. So um, we have a really dark value of cabinetry, a middle value of the flooring, and right here we have a cork flooring. This actually is really great uh, environmentally friendly flooring. We have a solid surface material countertop. This is great because uh, they can be antimicrobial, they can um, be limited in staining. For example, marble, which is a great natural product, it may have a chance of staining. So when you're thinking of visual contrast, you want to make sure that the surface changes within your home. So the different planes, your floors, your countertops, um, that they really show um, a counter, a, a transition. Here's kind of a fun piece to show when you're thinking of aging in the home, really your hardware. Don't forget you want to think about C-channel. So this is a shape where it's easy if you have arthritis. So your mobility limitations, it's really helpful to think about the hardware. Um, within this space, we um, also can think about the wall coverings in there. So uh, we have many options out on the interior design market where you can find natural products. This is one that's actually a cork wall covering, which is really interesting. Um, if you're not into trying to have uh, the like kind of wood and the cork and the natural look and you want something a uh, little bit more modulated, we call, this is an interesting product, it's Marmoleum. What both of these products provide for safety in the home is that they're called resilient flooring. So when we're concerned about environmental um, risk in the home and falling, we want to make sure that resilient flooring is something we could provide. And you can see that's different than, say, having a tile. Go ahead and save your tile for your accent. So, of course, when you have your cabinetry, um, maybe you want to have a backsplash where there is, uh, that could be an area of delight, that could be an area of interest. Um, and of course, don't forget you can add in colors. So, um, colors become really important in the environment when we're thinking about warm versus cool. So cool colors can uh, set your mood and be really, really important. Um, so uh, that would be if you want to have a calming space. Uh, warm colors sort of ignite and are thought for more the energetic space. Uh, think about the occupant and the homeowner, what their needs are. With some other fun materials here that for flooring, this is a hemp flooring. Uh, there's great products that are environmentally friendly, healthy. You want to make sure you consider those in the space. But this is um, an accessory dwelling unit. And so this kind of shows you just an opportunity you have in a home for um, visual contrast. So um, if uh, you do have these great windows going out, don't forget that maybe glare can be an issue. So you want to make sure that you could have some type of film on them or you can move it. Uh, 
Um, we're also demonstrating here for another space of an accessory dwelling unit the concept of um, uh, when you have uh, hearing. So hearing issues, and this is where uh, acoustics are really, really important. So materials play a role uh, in helping to provide a really nice sound um, quality in an environment. So within this space, we're addressing a couple things. Again, we do have uh, cork flooring showing here, but you could imagine having a very low pile carpet in the bedroom. So this is a bedroom with a great view looking out, um, and then it also has um, wall covering here that's wrapping around this space. When you're thinking of wall covering, today's technology has really innovative uh, solutions. Um, this is a wall covering that's antimicrobial, it's bio-based, um, it has a lot of different um, properties that can really help in a space. Um, we have the wonderful technology now with the natural product of uh, wool products, so they are insulating, insulating of sound as well as warmth, so touch. We don't think of just putting wool on our furnishings, we also can wrap them on the wall for sound. So you can imagine that's a product that we can use. Um, here we're showing um, in this particular space, the view to the outside is filtered. And so we talked uh, a bit about filtering of um, light coming into a space. And so in this case, we have a sheer product. And so sheer drapies or draperies are really helpful when you're setting up to have um, uh, interesting um, light that's coming in, but is not necessarily something you want to have uh, be direct for glare. So you can see here the flooring, the glare, is uh, limited, it's not happening, but then with the draperies, they also serve to function not just for uh, keeping the light from being too direct coming in, they also can be acoustical. So a lot of companies have acoustical properties for this space. Um, in this accessory dwelling unit, we also wanna make sure that the furnishings, if you notice here, have the great uh, arm space. And so when you are lifting um, yourself up out of the chair, you have something to grab onto. This is really wonderful for making sure that you're limiting uh, the environmental risk. So if your mobility is limited, your strength. Um, we want to make sure that you provide spaces for multifunction, so flexibility. Uh, this is a little fun accessory dwelling unit showing a workspace on this back wall, but it's a wall that's wrapping the bed and the bed is facing out to the window. So the space planning in this one um, is flexible. It's adaptable. And again, its use is being able to show for uh, the uh, workspace here. So a little desk that's hidden away. And then at the same time, you know, it doesn't show my offices in my bedroom. We have an opportunity to place that there. Um, so um, if, uh, you are looking at um, both of these spaces. You have vision as a focus, and then here you have um, the sensory change of sound. And those are just two of the senses that we, of course, talk about um, for sensory changes as we're aging. But also make sure you're thinking that just because one sense is changing, it doesn't mean that you aren't going to overemphasize another one. I mean, that's, that, that, that could potentially happen. Um, and so when we think about a multi-sensory experience, we also wanna think about when our senses are changing. I hope the presentation about design materials and use in designing homes where older adult residents live helps to illustrate how utilization of these elements can improve their health and well-being. So, a couple more questions. And Caitlin, I'm going to direct this one at you. Explain to us why and how should nature be brought into the interior design of the home for older adults? Tell us, tell us more about that. So nature has been proven to have multiple health benefits, just to name a few. It reduces stress, promotes healing, mental clarity and kind of increases focus 
And for those reasons, it's been used in education and healthcare a lot. So why couldn't we use those in the home? And that's kind of what we're moving towards. And they can be used in the house both physically in bringing in plants and having them as beautiful decor about your house. Also, some plants are um, air purifying plants. And let's say you didn't want to bring in a physical plant, you could do, um, you can find organic textiles and patterns and use those on your wall coverings or on your furniture, anything such as that, or even in artwork. And then another one also is using sounds of water to also emulate that that you can find outside in nature without going into nature. And of course, we have to remember to water the plants too. <laughs> yes. yes, that's important that too. That's, <laughs> that's really important. So, so that's kind of like an adjunct to the mm -hmm. materials that you were just presenting now. It's kind of a, a complement to that. Correct. Is that yes. what you're saying? Mm -hmm. So then, Moira, when you're designing um, a home, and viewers might be thinking about this, is it feasible for an older adult to consider hiring a professional designer or an architect or a contractor? Well, what do you think? Yeah, um, many of the uh, solutions that we've talked about today for the challenges that we're seeing in spaces can be done on your own. You, know, you can go to places, big box stores, Home Depot, you can change your lighting and at a low cost. And you can also empower yourself with this information to when you're seeing all the different materials in front of you. It should help you make good decisions. Um, but you can also, if you want to have really uh, the sustainable, eco-friendly materials that we were showing in the demonstration, you could go to places like the All Eco Design Center. We have one in Wheaton, Maryland, not far, and you can look at the non-toxic materials. Um, we have, um, when you want to have soft fabrics, maybe natural fibers, here in Arlington we even have calico corners. Um, you know, they have lots of natural fibers. So um, there are places you can go to get uh, the materials you want to have on your own. You can even get lighting from Dominion Lighting right here in Arlington, but that would be more for the high technology pieces. Um, but when you really want to look at this holistically, and you want to work with someone who's trained in building codes, space planning, um, and then the occupant health and safety and well-being, you would maybe want to look for a certified interior designer. And they are certified based on um, having had an examination, the education, of course, that allowed them to take the examination and some ex an, an experience. Uh, but that would be when you want to bring a designer on as a partner. So it sounds like a budget is probably an important factor as well. Right, and, and being upfront with what your needs are and right. working with a designer because they should be able to work with many people at different price points. Okay. So, Caitlin, I wanted to come back to you. Uh, in your work on this project, how are you building connections between the classroom and actual interior design practice? How do you provide theory and practice to foster, you know, bring about this wellness and longevity that we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? This research has really shown me where I can find these materials for a residential project. Um, in the curriculum at Marymount, there is a lot of exposure to hospitality and health care and those those bigger projects, not so much the residential. So in working with this, it's showing me where I can get all that at a residential level. And myself, being a college athlete, wellness is something that has always been important to me. And in this research, learning that wellness is important and everyone should be looking at it, it's just gonna change throughout your lifetime. And so I'm seeing those simple changes that can happen in the interior environment that anyone can do as their wellness needs evolve and change over time. What, what have been the biggest challenges in conducting your research? What are you running into? Yeah, so as I do the research, obviously I'm with Marymount University and I have access to a lot of journals and database, databases and articles um, and not everybody has that access. And even though I have this access, the information is so vast and just so varied that it's really hard to find and so I think the biggest thing 
that I would hope to come out of it is in a space where everyone can go and access the material they need to make these changes and find the information at one single source. So those caregivers, those aging adults can find the information for themselves and really take, take the lead. Okay, well, so coming back to you, Moira, then what's the next phase for this project? What's, what's gonna be the focus? What, what happens next? Yeah, so this gathering and collecting of this information, we really want to find where currently information is being communicated, how it's being communicated to um, older adults, to communities. Um, and we, we want to make sure that uh, once we really understand where it's not being communicated, we really can bring some of our skills in to illustrate the information. So, you know, research can sit in textbooks, we can study it, we can gather data, but it's really important as designers that you can communicate graphically information and that brings clarity. So we're, we're really, next steps are how does this get out? So dissemination um, and as an educator, that's a goal. <laughs> that's always trying to impart information yeah. and, and educate whoever is out there. And so if viewers are watching this and have some ideas or want to get in touch with you uh, to share their ideas or get more information, how can they contact you? Yeah, I'd love to talk with anyone about the research. Um, but I can be reached through my email. It's mdenson, so M-D-E-N-S-O-N, -E at Marymount. That's M-A-R-Y-M-O-U-N-T dot E-D-U. Okay. I want to thank Moira and Caitlin from Marymount University for joining me today. It's been a real pleasure to have you. So, and want our viewers to know that this program is broadcast Sundays at 5.30 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. on Camp Comcast Channel 69 and Verizon Channel 38 in Arlington, Virginia. Aging Matters is also on the radio. The program is broadcast every Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. on WERA Arlington 96.7 FM. And be sure to check out the Aging Matters website that address is agingmattersonline.com, and there you can find more information both about our radio programs and the TV episodes. So thank you for watching the program today, and please join me again for the next Aging Matters show. And until then, remember, age is just a number, not a label.